it looks like a business plot because of all the times, you know, and the you know bands from the '70s are getting back together. But it, we we did it totally totally innocently and just kind of organically. That's the way it went. Just dragged us through the process. So, what do you think, Corey? I mean, how old were you when that record was out? What, 1972, 72, right? I would be three. Three? Yeah. So you were obviously into it heavily at I that mean, age. I was just starting my career, so <laughs> yeah. get yeah. into it. Yeah, right. So did you know all these guys before you started to play with them? Yeah, I did actually, because like where we're from in London, they had a reputation being, you know, a good band. And with the police. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, I did, I was familiar with them and what they were doing and, and stuff, but... Um, not as much as you might think. Like I just sort of knew that they were around and that they were playing and that, but I didn't really get to, to know what it was all about until I got a chance to get involved. I think the most important thing has been like being able to work with guys that have that experience and you get beyond the technicals of being, you know, playing and, and performing and into sort of the spiritual thing and the emotional trip and, and that part of it, which I really drew a lot of mm -hmm. from, you know, working with these guys. right back in the game you know I mean the game is still the game but the rules have changed a little bit what kind of things are you running into now that surprise you Mike I think running into you <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and uh, the whole much music thing of course is the giant giant new influence since you know many years ago that's really the, one of the biggest changes and um, I think the independent stuff is that's great and it's just a there's so much music, original music being made in this country now compared to the old days that was, it was quite restrictive. You were lucky if you got played, you know. If you were a Canadian group, you didn't get played. I mean, they're crazy. Well, you know, helped. I mean, they had, we had to have a law in this country so that the you know, radio and the media would play Canadian music. I mean, that's ridiculous. People, that sounds kind of funny now because there's such a big scene, but, uh, you know. So a lot has changed, Mike. How well received was it when, it, when, when you finally got the, the record done and out there? I mean, what sort of response were you getting from people? We were really amazed. <laughs> it was as simple as that. Uh, uh, we've been um, on the national charts now with the last three singles for... Uh, over 40 weeks, and uh, um, it's just an amazing thing, and we're really pleased. showing up in places as Thunderbug, you know, like last night when the yeah. guy comes out of the woodwork who knows, like, who played what and what, like, you know, know. Th this guy's talking about B-sides of singles released in other countries, for God's sakes. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> amazing. I mean, are there lots of them out there? Yeah, there is, and it's amazing. Uh, you know, I talk to people about collecting our old albums and how much they're paying for them in Europe and how much they're paying for them in the States, and... Uh, it's great, you know, it's, it's really wonderful. But really, the main thing is, like, you know, life goes on. I think that's the thing, the lesson I've learned in this, uh, doing this thing is that um, just because um, I'm 43 years old, it doesn't mean that I'm going to pack up my guitar and quit playing because I still love it. And, and life goes on. And uh, uh, all, these, all the bands that are playing now that are young bands, you know, I'm sure many of those musicians will be, you know, still musicians in their 40s and 50s and 60s. And uh, it's hard to imagine, I know, but uh, uh, that's, that's the best part about it, that you can carry on and, and do a business and, and still uh, do what you love, and it's great.